we just introduced this concept of order of growth, which is a way of characterizing how much of some resource a computational process uses up, where that's a function of the problem size. So the bigger the problem, the more resources you'll use. And you want to characterize that with a simple function that tells you bounds on how much of your resource you're going to use, even if you don't know the exact answer. So let's look at a couple more examples. We're going to exponentiate. What does that mean? Well, that's raising one number to the power of another number. So here's the goal. We want to exponentiate quickly. We want to use one more multiplication in order to double the size of the problem. How do we do that? Well, we're going to have to come up with an implementation that allows us to exponentiate very quickly. So here's one that's not so quick. I raise b to the power of n. Well, if n is 0, I just return 1. Otherwise, I return b times the result of raising b to the power n minus 1. So b to the 0 is 1, b to the 1 is b, b to the 2 is b squared, etc. So I can write down a recursive formulation of this in math as well. I can say b to the n is either 1 if n is 0, or b times b to the n minus 1 otherwise. But here's another way of writing what b to the n is. I could say b to the n is 1 if n is 0. Or I can use what I know about exponents to say that b to the n is actually b to the half n squared. Now that only works if n is even. If n is odd, I can go back to my previous definition. b to the n is b times b to the n minus 1. So these are both two different ways of writing down the same relationship. But the one down here implies a faster algorithm which we'll call fast x. So we're going to square x by returning x times x. Now we can look through the body of this, which has the same base case. But there's a different recursive case. So if n is 0, we return 1. If n is even, then we'll return the square of raising b to the power half n. Now we can do integer division here because we just checked and made sure that n was even. So we know we can divide it evenly by 2. Otherwise, we do what we did before. We multiply b times b to the power n minus 1. Okay, we're going to define x. Raise b to the power n, which is if n is 0, we return 1. Otherwise, we return b times b x b to the n minus 1. So the base never changes, but the exponent decreases. We need to be able to square in order to define fast x, which takes in the same two arguments, b to the n, has the same base case, but has two different recursive cases, depending on whether n is even. There's a check to make sure that n is even. In this case, we can return the square of the result of raising b to the half n. Otherwise, I have a case that looks like what I had before. I call fast x on b and n minus 1. Okay, let's load this into the interpreter and make sure it works correctly. 2 to the 10th power is 1024, and 2 to the 100th power is a big number. And what about fast exp? It works too. Now let's trace both of these functions to see if we can understand the difference and how they run. We'll trace that, we'll trace that, stop the interpreter, reload, and exponentiate 2 to the 10th and see that it has a very regular process, 10 to 9 to 8 to 7 to 6 to 5 to 4 to 3 to 1, and then the results are different powers of 2, all the way up to 1024. 
whereas FASTX has a different behavior. So the output is the same, but the way we get there is we go from 10 straight to 5, then 5 to 4, 4 to 2, 2 to 1, and we finish. So the key step here is that we went from 32 straight to 1024 by squaring 32, which means that we take fast exp 100, we get to this very large result in far fewer than 100 steps. So what have we learned? Well, we defined exp, which very clearly had linear space and linear time. So the linear time is because we made one recursive call with n minus one, and the space is because we don't get to return from any of our calls until we finally get to the base case, which is why we had that deep nesting structure in the trace. Now, what about fast exp? Well, that's what's called logarithmic time, or theta log n. We don't need to specify the base of the logarithm because all logarithms differ just by a constant factor, and constants are ignored in order of growth notation, or theta notation. So log n means that one more multiplication, one more step in time, and one more function call in space lets us double the problem size, which is exactly what we saw. So we could handle two to the 10th in just one more step, relative to 2 to the 5th. 